Classic Rock Beagle. Look at the Classic Rock Beagle. I'm here with Moser, who's clearly unhappy. Well, obviously, Buddy Mercury belongs there, but they have this role in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that you have to be out for 25 years. I think Buddy's been out for five or six. I know, but there are other species involved with this too, so. Well, yeah, Snoopy would be eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but he's been on the class Rock Beagles, so, so he's not cool anymore, so. Uh, just kidding, just kidding, Wilson, just kidding, just kidding. Anyways, the Rock and I did say that I was going to start the year off with three episodes of um, random reviews. However, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame came out with their list of nominees for 2023, so we're going to do our annual review of the 23 nom 20, 14 nominees for 23. Um, so I mean, at the end, I'm going to give you my, my six favorites, and then six I think should be in objectively according to the criteria of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The first, uh, I believe, is the only one that was on last year's list, two of them, three of them. There are three uh, repeat uh, candidates from last year. One of them was my favorite from last year, Kate Bush. I will say she's arguably my favorite this year. There's a couple that I really like in there as well. Uh, last year I said that, the, that, that she is perhaps maybe not objectively. I'm looking at the from American side. She actually is, is pretty, uh, pretty big deal in England. And she actually, in, in America, there's a history of singer-songwriter women like uh, Carol King, um, Carly Simon, who actually got in last year, um, Joni Mitchell. There's a, America's had a history of singer songwriters. She is the first female artist to have put a self-penned hit, self hit into number one in England. So based on that, I'm saying, yeah, get her ass in there. Uh, she actually is very uh, influential in England. And in America, she's influential for music nerds. I mean, Pat's, Pat Benatar, I'm crying out loud, covered one of her songs. Um, so, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to step up for my girl, Kate Bush, this year. Um, I love her music. She's such an original. She doesn't give a shit about what's been done before, what's being done around her. She's going to do what she wants to do, and I love her for it. Um, Cheryl Crow. Before Alanis Morissette, really? Um, I think Cheryl Crow's had some good I think everybody's got a packet of Cheryl Crow songs that they like. And she almost is in Fleetwood Mac. This is, um, she puts me in an awkward position on this. But um, Cheryl Crow has some good music. I kind of like her, some of her music. I'm fairly favorable to her, but no way she belongs in the Rock Hall. Uh, not before Lannis. Lannis moved shit. She changed shit. She, um, her music survives. Cheryl Crow's. Uh, get a bunch of old ladies around. Oh, it's Cheryl Crow's music, so nice. But she's not gonna. She doesn't transcend generations the way Lance Morissette does. Uh, so Missy Elliott. Um, not a Missy Elliott fan per se, but I kind of appreciated what she did. Where other, um, where other artists of her generation were taking the clothes off and say, um, "I'm gonna have sex with you, bitch." Um, she stayed real in her subject matter and kept her clothes on. I, I appreciated that. I actually appreciated that about Celine Dion until she got too big for her britches. Um, so Missy Elliott, I appreciate more than I like. Is she influential enough to be in the Rock Hall? I think she is. Um, I mean, you have the next generation, the, the Nicki Minaj's and uh, pointing to her as an influence. I, I think she's been fairly influential. Iron Maiden, why the hell is an Iron Maiden in there? Why the hell is an Iron Maiden in there? So they, they can sell out, um, who else can sell out 500,000 fans in Brazil? Come on. Um, if rock and roll is a worldwide phenomenon, you have to put an Iron Maiden in there. They didn't have any hits, per se, but they just have millions and millions of loyal fans. Their music, I like Iron Maiden's song, so I said that. I like Iron Maiden's song. I think all the songs sound alike, so I get tired of Iron Maiden. But A, put, a, put one Iron Maiden song on, I'm good. It's good music. Uh, my problem is that they say, well, 
Whereas ACDC does one bad song over and over and over again, Iron Maiden put this one good song. So I, I like Maiden, I get tired of them quick, but they, oh man, do they belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I can't think of a single band right now, now that the Doobie Brothers are in, that more belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I have to think about that. Is in. Uh, I'd have to think about that. I can't off the top of my head think of a band that deserves to be there right now. Now Judas Priest is in more than Iron Man. Uh, Joy Division New Order. I find I appreciate their music when I listen to it. Um, and there's no question about their influence. What you saw coming out of England in the early 80s was a result of Joy Division. Um, they're super influential. Gosh, they, they really deserve to be in there. If you ever watched a Young Ones episode, other than when Motorhead was in it, everything came off the Joy Division tree that you saw on there. Um, they, they brought synth, British synth, New Wave synth, that combination together. Um, they're, they're the, they took what was happening with, uh, oh gosh, what's the name of the band? Um, what was happening in the post-punk scene and Made and cra they crafted it into something different, taking that influence as well as craft work. And took that influence and made um, very unique music, and people were copying them for years after that. And like I said, I don't listen to them, but when I come up, I, I get it. Kind of like The Cure that way. It's like I don't listen to The Cure, but when the song comes up, it's not bad. I, I kind of get that. Cindy Lauper, I like Cindy Lauper. You all know this, I've told you that. Uh, Cindy Lauper is good. Um, why is she the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I, I put her on a list of 10 uh, overrated classic rock songs. I also put Whitney Houston on there for what it's worth. Um, and I said in the, it's like, no, they're not, she's not really classic rock, but I gotta say this. It's kind of my take on it. Uh, she's not classic rock. She was actually in a rock band before she went solo, but she's not classic rock. Um, the minute she went solo, she ceased to be rock. She, as much as I like Cindy Lauper, I hope she doesn't make it. Uh, Willie Nelson, let me just take a quick look here. I should have done this last time. I was wrong about um, uh, what Patsy Klein being in there, so I'm not going to make the same mistake this time. Is Johnny Cash in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. Johnny Cash. Well, come on down. Oh, I see what's promised. Johnny Cash is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, uh, I will say Willie Nelson belongs. Uh, although Willie Nelson's not quite as rock and roll as Johnny Cash was when he started. Um, I like Willie. I, I like his persona and his personality more than I like his music, but he's a good musician. He is a good musician. He wrote hits before he, went, before he became an artist himself for like Patsy Cline and, um, oh, what's her name? The short girl that put out Rock and Roll on a Christmas tree. Uh, she, she was, she was, he was a well-known songwriter, took it out and wrote it, started doing covers. But he's a, he's a good artist. Um, I like to see him in there. Rage. Come on, hello, Rage. 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 They need to be in there. My gosh. Um, they're kind of like um, Joy Division where I don't listen to them, but I like it when, I, when one of their songs comes on. Uh, but it's all about the influence. It's all about the influence they had, not only on rock, but also on rap. I mean, Chuck D cites Rage as one of his influences. And he was out changing the world, uh, you know, five, six years before Rage came out. Uh, and he looks at Rage and says, no, they, they, they've tapped into something I've been wanting to get to. Soundgarden. Really? How are they not in already? I mean, they need to be in just because they were the format for the Lame List, first of all. But, um, and there were actual members of Soundgarden and Lame List, and if you go back to my early episodes. Um, but uh, Black Hole Sun was, uh, I, I, was it? Dave Grohl said about Black Hole Sun, he says, Nirvana came out and says, we are the Beatles meet um, Black Sabbath. He heard Black Hole Sun and says, no, this is the Beatles meet Black Sabbath. This is it's melodic, like one of the Beatles is, um, you know, um, like one of their acid songs in the, like 67. But it still had the punch of what Tony Iommi was doing a few years later. Spinners, 
Spinners are one of my favorite group, uh, soul groups, period. I love the Philly sound. Love the Philly sound. I, and when uh, uh, Tom Bell died, and I put that in the, uh, the tribute to uh, Class Crockers who passed away, I just had to put Tom Bell in there because I love the Philly sound so much. I, I, this, yeah, this, he was the guy behind the Spinners and against the, um, oh, the Delphonics and also the... Um, I've seen that group. Um, bet you back on Anyways, the Spinners might be my favorite of the three. They were so good. I don't think they belong here. Um, they're a different side of, of uh, rhythm and blues. Um, I, uh, they weren't even that big. They had like three or four big hits. By the time I started listening to music on the radio, they were doing like, uh, you know, old Sam Cooke songs um, at that point. Uh, as much as I love the Spinners, I love them. Um, I, I'm not thinking they're, they're, what, they're what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is about. Um, get, home, get Hall of Notes in there first, and then come back for the Spinners and the uh, Delphonics and these other Philly groups. Tribe Called Quest. What did I say last year? Last year I said get Eminem in their first comeback for Tribe Called Quest. Tribe Called Quest belongs in there. Now that there's not another eminent or eminent artist uh, that from the rap genre that needs to be there. Yeah, get him in. Get him in there. Not, not big into rap in general, but uh, knowing uh, correctly, I should say, uh, you know, as opposed to Gene Simmons, who is, the, of course, we know the bastion of artistic integrity. Uh, who says the rock and roll is strictly for rock and roll. I, what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has said is that you start with Rocket rock 88 and the early rockers like that, and then the, the children of those, and the rock belongs in there. They are a child of disco, which is a child of R&B. So they are under the rock and roll umbrella. So um, I think Tribe Called Quest is so influential they need to be there. White Stripes, get them in. Get them in. There were there were the saviors of rock and roll in the aughts. They were the last rock group. Now I hope you're not counting uh, Maroon Five and uh, One Republic. They were the last rock group that were celebrities. Um, that was because of some really good music, um, but um, they were the last. Rock stars. Uh, there are good rock groups now that nobody knows about, and there are other groups that are rock and roll where you just know the guy that sings and uh, raps and the, the guy that plays the drums. Oh, yeah, he's in the group too. Um, but uh, there is still rock and roll being put out there. But the last famous rock group was the White Stripes, and just for that, they need to be in there. Warren Zevon. Now, I like Warren Zevon better than, oh, I missed one, uh, better than, say, George Michael or um, Sheryl Crow. He is a critic's darling. Beck, he's kind of like Beck. He's a critic's darling. There's something that makes music nerds get, feel all mushy that Warren Zevon's about. Uh, he's clever. Um, I'll never forgive him for doing the piano riff that, um, uh, that uh, Kid Rock stole. But um, he's clever, he's funny. Um, I like Warren Zevon. I don't think he belongs there. Um, I mean, did he have an influence? Everybody knows Werewolves of London. Um, is the howl of were and piano part of Werewolves of London enough reason to keep him in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't think it is. But he is, he is absolutely a critic starling. Uh, so that's why he might go in. So now we, uh, I missed one, George Michael. There were, he was the biggest laughing stock my early years of high school. Uh, now, there's nothing like being a laughing stock when I'm 12, but 14, 15, still a little bit, a little bit of that <laughs> uh, about me at that age. Uh, he was obviously wham. Yeah, the, uh, the jokes came out. Jokes wrote themselves. Uh, but um, it, it, wham. And some decent music. This is George Michael's solo. Uh, he had that big album, Faith. He had a, had, a, had the hit before Faith, and then he had Faith um, after he left Wham. And then he had an album called Listen Without Prejudice that nobody bought. I thought that was a really good album. It's a 
uh, he had a good image or good good vision of what music he wanted to do. I don't know if he always carried it out, but he had a really good vision of what he wanted to do. Um, I'll never forgive him for Wham, but um, um, that that was his face was okay. Listen without prejudice was really good. Uh, then, he, then he got stale after that, so he worked his way up to, to really good quality. So I'm going to give you my six choices. And those are uh, subjective that I like, and I'll give you the six that belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame according to the uh, according to their criteria, what they've shown. So I'm going to choose Kate Bush, Iron Maiden, Rage, Soundgarden. I like the Spinners, and. I'm say, I'm, for subject of Cindy Lauper, I do like Cindy Lauper or Cheryl Crow. We tie, kind of tied there. Six that belong in and why they belong in. Iron Maiden, come on! How is Iron Maiden not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, Rage belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, like I said last year. They they may not get in the Hall of Fame. They may never get in the Hall of Fame because of their opinions. Like I said last year, I share many of their opinions. Other people don't. But I think they belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because of the effect they've had on rock and roll. What uh, Limp Biscuit was trying to do in the late 90s is because of what Rage the Machine was doing in the early 90s. Soundgarden needs to be there. Tribe Called Quest. Last year I said, put Eminem in this year, come back for Tribe Called Quest. They are very influential in rap, so they need to be there. White Stripes need to be there. And I would say Joy Division needs to be in there. So... Um, and even though I defended Kate Bush, and I would love to see her in there, uh, I don't think I don't think this is the year. Again, subjectively, Kate Bush, Iron Maiden, Cindy Lauper, Rage Against the Machine, Soundgarden, and the Spinners. Objectively, our, uh, Iron Maiden, Joy Division, Rage, Soundgarden, A Tribe Called Quest, and the White Stripes. So that's that's my um, those are my picks for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, you know, tell me how wrong I am down below, and uh, of course, Moser would appreciate it if you give a shout out for Snoopy for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, and uh, we'll come back. The next two episodes will be the um, second and third installments. The next one should come out on Lincoln's birthday. Uh, so, as always, rock and rock on from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame.